Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood. And this is going to be a summary video of on the last two videos I did on laser engraving photos on mirrors. And we're going to try to keep this short. Again, a summary of the last two, which we linked at the end of this one. So hang around. Alright, so I had a lot of messages about why I was trying to push these mirrors. Everybody, and I think in both the videos I was like, okay, go to Amazon and buy this pack of 50 mirrors. If you didn't do that and you tried to follow along, you most likely did not get good results when you used the same settings that I was recommending. And the reason for that is mirrors are not all created equally they're not created the same way and in order for you to have a positive outcome with the the mirrors the photos and the settings that I was demonstrating in the previous two videos you had to be working with these mirrors and if you weren't you weren't gonna have the same outcome mirrors are made in different processes and I'm not even sure what this process is I mean, it's a mirror. You know what that looks like. But on the back side of this, it's 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 white. But no matter how I try, I can't scratch that up. It doesn't seem to be paper. It does seem to be some type of finish that was looks like it was possibly rolled on, because you can see the the hills and valleys of maybe where a roller rolled to finish on there. And this white finish is a, just a protectant layer to protect the actual mirror substrate that they put on here to make it a reflective surface. And there's different ways they can create the mirrored subsurface. They can use uh, like a mylar or a plastic film that just adhere to the back of the glass and then put a, a top protective coating on it. And then, but, but for a really good quality mirrors, you have uh, plating processes, silver plating processes. But even those are not done the same way and they're not going to produce the same results. If you, if you get a really good project that you did on this mirror and then you go and pick up a, a mirror that has a different uh, backing to it. Where is my mirror? There it is. All right. All right, so where this mirror has the white protectant on it, and again, like I said, you can see that it has hills and valleys in it on that cover, that surface. So that kind of looks like a rolled on finish. But this, this is a dark gray or dark, you know, all, all, yeah, dark, dark gray material. And this is really slick and smooth. There are no hills and valleys. So this looks to me like this was probably sprayed on uh, or a bath. But being that it's, I don't know. I don't know the process. But this is slick and smooth. And you'll find this on a lot more of your higher quality mirrors. But even these have different processes in which the plating is done. Because this material, this mirror rather, and I doubt you'll be able to see it, but in this very, very low uh, power and low speed here, it burnt off just the black material. And in that black square, or that, low, that one corner square, and I doubt you'll see it in the video, it's actually the mirror surface. I can see my reflection in that lower corner. It just removed just the black material. Um, but once you got past that and removed the mirror, you're starting to expose the glass. And I played with this and got several different results until I found the, uh, a really good grayscale from low to high and worked with that. 
But one thing I noticed on this mirror is it's either black, mirror finish, or glass. But then on other mirrors that I purchased from uh, one of the big box store, hardware to, stores, it actually burned away uh, the black material. Then you exposed copper. Then below the copper, you exposed the silver. And then below the silver, you exposed the glass. There was another layer of copper plating in there. So different mirrors are going to be constructed differently, processed differently, and have different results. But if you go through the processes and the steps that I went over in video one and video two of those photographic uh, mirrors, or engraving photographs on mirrors, you can get there regardless which mirror you're using. But I wanted you using the same mirrors as I was demonstrating with so that you could see you can get that positive result. And the, res the, the settings that I used to get such an excellent result with this mirror were completely opposite of anything I've done before with mirrors or engraving, period. And it has to do with the type of, of mirror. Um, I, I never would have guessed that the, the final settings that I landed on would have been what they were. But it was about learning the process. And if you, I, I spent weeks putting those two videos together. And that's why they're rather lengthy on YouTube. And I, I was going to try and show you the difference between using a mirror like this now, this is a $1.25 mirror that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. It has a nice little frame on it. And when you open this one and take a look at it, this one is uh, a, a different mirror process than any of those that I just looked at. When I say it's different, uh, I've already painted this one. I painted over that so as to try and create the image or let you see the image better. But this mirror is almost almost craft paper uh, thick. It's very, very thin mirror. It is glass. It's very, uh, very fragile glass. But this one is more, uh, before I put the paint on it, you can actually take your fingernail and kind of scratch up the paper. It was like a paper material on it. But I used the exact same settings that I demonstrated in the previous videos to try and duplicate the photograph and it did not have the same positive outcome. It was close, but not close enough. So here I would need to spend, you know, several hours figuring out the best settings in order to replicate the same results as I got with the other mirror. But if you're going to be doing photographs on mirrors, if you stick with the same product, the same mirror, then your power settings and your focus point and all that, that's all going to pretty much stay the same. Now you're only going to have to worry about getting your image to the correct settings. And what do I mean by getting your image to the correct settings? Let's jump in here to Lightburn. Now I have that photograph pulled into Lightburn here. And right now this is an unedited photo. This is just straight off of social media. And it is a very gray image. And if we zoom in here, you can see, you, you can barely make out any detail in the eye and the pupil is there but it's very 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 vague you can't really see a lot of detail there and with not having a lot of contrast if you're this is now in a uh, if we look at the cut settings I'm working in image mode of grayscale and since this is a very gray image and there's not a lot of contrast this is not going to produce a very good image when you go to try and laser engrave it so you want to import your image, make sure you're in grayscale if you're going to be using this process and techniques that I've talked about. 
then right click. Well, first, you need to select your image, right click, adjust image. And I've got to invert my display so I'm looking at you know the same level of grayscale. Right now, it's showing that there is no additional contrast or brightness in gamma. And what you're going to want to look at, and you can, and I'm going to blow this up to full screen. You can see that you don't see much detail in the eyes, and that's what I look at is the eyes. I look for uh, really good contrast in the eyes in photographs, and then that's going to give me my best outcome because this area is what I'm really wanting to have the best result with. Everything else around it, whatever those end up being, is what they're going to be. So I start playing with my contrast. Add a little contrast. Start darkening it up a little bit. Uh, lower the brightness on it. None. So if you, the more contrast you give it, the better your photo is going to turn out. Increase the gamma. That's a little dark. Brighten her up a little bit. And you're going to just play with this and get it to where now we're starting to get something there i'm really starting to see and now you can start to see the pupil starting to have some definition there uh, a lot darker in this pupil than here this is all grayed out and just rolling in with your mouse you can zoom zoom in and out looking at the stitching on the accent on the band of the hat. Those details are what I'm looking for. And then once you get really good contrast, you want to have your DPI set at about 500 DPI until it OK. And now that image versus, and let's pull in the original so you can see them side by side. See the difference? Much more detail. The contrast was, and the gamma really made the big difference there. This is not going to produce a good engraved image, no matter what you're engraving it on. Doesn't matter if you're trying to do it on wood or uh, glass or mirrors or whatever. You need this contrast when you're trying to do photographs in grayscale. And I almost forgot a very <laughs> crucial thing. When you're doing an image on the back of a mirror, you need to come into your cuts and your layers uh, and settings open up that layer and you want to make sure you turn on your negative image you want to engrave a negative image on the back of a mirror in order to produce the correct outcome so make sure you've got that turned on when you're engraving the back of a mirror so we've working in grayscale we got our dpi at 500 We've adjusted our contrast. Um, we've looked at the difference in the quality mirrors. And, and that's another thing, too, is you're not going to get this in the first try or two. And that's why that pack of mirrors, right down there, there's the link. If you can get those, these are really inexpensive, a pack of 50. And you're going to go through probably half of them just through test to try and figure out your best settings and your best powers, your best, every, just overall your best settings. Because you're not just worried about power and speed and grayscale, but you also got to get your contrast right. You've got to get your scan angles right. You've got to get your focus right. Uh, it is a lot of information. And in a conversation with Rich, the Louisiana hobby guy, he's like, yeah, I don't do photographs on mirrors. That's hard. It's very hard. It is an art form. Um, you can do SVGs or you can do uh, just some text or, or a just an, a regular SVG image, and it's really a piece of cake. You do a, a simple power scale to find out 
what's going to move remove most of uh, of the material you want removed uh, and you don't have to worry about grayscale you're just running at one speed and power you burn that SVG on there you back fill the the mirror with some painted on the uh, to give it some color and you've got a very nice engraved mirror but photographs are difficult that's why there was two videos as long as they were but it all comes down to practice 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 and it has to be consistent and you can't do consist you can't have consistency if you're working with four different types of mirrors because they're not the same if you don't do the hobo with wood mirrors then if you're wanting to do like this i think this would be really cool these are uh, you know, a dollar or, or so at Dollar Tree, and if you could really get this dialed in, and you could do a photo, a photograph, and maybe even do some. And I've got some words on there, and you could backfill those with color, whatever. And as cheap as they are, buck a piece or so, go online to Dollar Tree, and buy a case of these. You know, spend you know, thirty, forty bucks on these, and and you can get multiple tests on this mirror until you figure out what the best settings are for this mirror and then you could have a really neat product with this nice plastic frame that you can uh, just set on the the shelf put a command script on it hang it up whatever but in order to get those settings dialed in and you really get that consistency you have to have the same mirrors that you're testing on because it ain't gonna work from one mirror to the next I promise normally and when I mentioned focus that's another thing that you're going to play with whenever you are setting up your laser to engrave on wood you have your focus gauge and you know what your focus point needs to be to engrave on the surface of the wood well that doesn't work when you're doing photographs and it doesn't work when you're doing mirrors typically when I'm doing images period I will pre-focus raise the, the the height of the laser from its optimum recommended focal point and I, that by doing so that's going to enlarge the dot size of that laser where it's hitting the, the surface and increase my lines per inch I, by increasing my lines per inch and, and increasing the size of that dot size, there will be some overlapping as it's doing its scan. And that just helps really create super definition on photographs. But on these mirrors, pre-focusing it did not work, which was completely opposite of everything I've ever done. I had to sub-focus it. I had to bring it lower than the optimum focal point. I lowered it by, I think, one level on the focal gauge was one millimeter. So by dropping it one millimeter, it made for an excellent image on this mirror. I tried that same setting on this mirror and did not get the same results. So there are a lot of things that you have to consider. Uh, your contrast your overall image if your image is not good to begin with then you're not going to get a good result you need the best highest definition image you can get uh, your contrast has got to be right your DPI of your image has got to be right uh, focal point on the laser and that's going to be something that you may end up having to play with with your mirrors and I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting something uh, I'm probably forgetting a lot of things but if you did not watch the previous two videos on engraving photos on mirrors before you ask any questions in the comments on this one go back and watch those in detail and trust me there's a lot of details if you're hitting that skip button you're liable to skip over something that's going to completely make that your time wasted because you've just missed something that was crucial on the outcome of that that image or of that project so I hope you found these uh, informative hope you found those uh, helpful they were a lot of work 
I was going to try and produce several different uh, positive results on different mirrors. Like I said, I worked with this mirror, uh, ran several tests on this mirror, and it took me days, hours, you know, uh, of testing. And uh, let's grab all these. Oh my! In that pack of fifty, these are all the test pieces. And and when I say test pieces, some of the mirrors had multiple tests per mirror. So, and with each of these taking anywhere from half an hour or more, uh, this was days of testing to get to the result that I got to, which you won't have to do if you're using these mirrors and you've watched the video in detail, you can get to a similar positive result without having to do all the work I did. But if you do do the work, you can't get these mirrors and you want to really do photos on mirrors watch the previous two videos learn how to do those tests yourself and you will figure it out but it ain't gonna be easy and it ain't gonna happen overnight uh, unless you just got the luck of the Irish and you just fall into it if uh, you are not a patron uh, I would really appreciate if you'd consider becoming a patron on patreon.com. But if it's just not in the wheelhouse right now, it's not in the financial pocketbook, it's not in it's not in not a possibility to become a patron. Go to this link anytime you need to purchase from Amazon. This will not cost you a penny more. And regardless what you're buying, if you're going on there to buy your pet supplies, if you're going on there to buy your um, favorite rice that you can't buy in your local deli, whatever, I don't know. No matter what you're buying, if you go to hobowithwood.com slash Amazon, that is a simple redirect that will redirect you to Amazon, just like if you went to amazon.com. But by going through my redirect, Amazon knows that I sent you there, and they're going to pay me a few pennies on everything you buy doesn't matter what it is. And I do mean pennies. It's not going to add up to a, t a ton off of your purchase. But if everybody watching this does that and makes hobowithwood.com slash Amazon your regular everyday login for Amazon instead of going to amazon.com, you're going to support me and support this channel and pennies add up to dollars and that will help me out immensely. If you can be a patron, I'd really love it. Patreon.com slash Hobo with Wood. There is the super thanks in the below all of the YouTube videos. And now I'm going to work on posting a video on how to create the uh, prop, the kickstand for picture frames. Uh, how do you determine the right angle? How do you get that positioned right? That's going to be the next video coming from Hobo with Wood. So until then, thanks for watching, and I'm out.